another cloudy day, but today both of the pumpkins are gonna get pollinated. This is a day earlier than we thought, but they're ready to go. Ready to open. Now the 2350 Ginger is pollinated with itself and sealed back up. And just for extra safety, we'll add a cup over the top for a day or so. 1634 pollinated today, June 26th. And the 2350 Ginger also pollinated today. Just did a bunch more vine bearing, of course, and plants kind of more or less the same other than they just keep growing. The 1634 Rhea has really un not, no change to the split. <clears throat> Say it hasn't gotten better or worse, but it's not progressing and it is looking like it's sort of callousing over. So I'm trying to just not worry about it and let it be what it is. I wanted to just document the moisture level this year so far because I'm really watering quite a bit less. So the surface level is pretty much dry, but when you get in just a little bit, there's some moisture. So this is a lot less than I would have had last year, but I kind of think I overwatered last year with one of my problems. So just to document it. Not wet, not even really clumping all that much. But right now I'm only watering with this drip tape uh, about every three days for 35 minutes. All right, today is June 29th. This is the 2350 Ginger plant. And we have the original open pollinated pumpkin that I don't think actually took because it's probably eight days or something like that old and it doesn't look so good but we were never really planning to go with that one anyway and then we have this one that's about three days old and it looks okay so far hard to say if it's actually pollinated um, but I did notice a small sort of little imperfection underneath so that's not ideal uh, but we'll keep keep it moving and this one right here in the tip which maybe will bloom in a day um, or two is kind of in the perfect spot with the right amount of uh, plant behind it so ideally that's the one that'll be the keeper later pollination than ideal but I'd rather see the plant filled out um, and we're starting to get warmer weather now, so uh, that's good. Over on this plant, the 1634 Rhea. This one looks really good, also three days old, and uh, everything looks fantastic. Um, but again, not a ton of plant behind it. This one here is was pollinated one day later, and it's dangerously close to the vine. It's weird, it's growing under the vine, which is sort of unusual and then we picked up this split here it's going in the direction of the vine and it's kind of healed itself but uh doesn't make me feel super comfortable so one option might be this plant we deadhead here let these secondaries grow out and then tertiaries to fill in the space over here um, so we'd have one deadheaded plant and then let that plant be a more traditional uh, plant where it grows out and around let the main vine just continue to go. Um, haven't decided for sure, but that's likely outcome is. And it would be kind of cool to have an A to B comparison. We also got our tissue test results back from Western Laboratories. 
and it shows that we're deficient in phosphorus, boron, and copper. So I have some amendments that are soluble in water that we're gonna use in our injector, and that will go into the drip irrigation system. Low phosphorus does uh, make sense for low, slower growth and slower root development that I've experienced. Some of it's probably due to the cooler weather, but some of it uh, you know, might be related to this lower phosphorus number. This is the injector that I'm using. So it's a tank that you put your water soluble nutrients into. You have a setting above here that controls how fast uh, the, hey Kelly, controls how fast the nutrients are dispersed. Um, and then it goes through this hose uh, into the whole drip system. All right, today is the first day of July and we just pollinated another pumpkin on the 2350 Dinger. And this position wise would be the perfect one underneath this cup right here. Um, we have this one uh, just in case this one doesn't take cause it's gonna be really hot today, uh, mid to high nineties. Um, the original one that just opened pollinated back here just never took. So I'm gonna cut it out and then I'm um, gonna set up some overhead watering today just for the peak heat of the day, just to try and keep the leaves from scorching too much. There's definitely a lot of leaf scorch that happened on the plant yesterday. Yesterday was pretty hot too. Today's supposed to be hotter. So just trying to protect as much as we can the leaf from the leaves from uh, losing the leaves from the heat. And the heat's not that hot, but I think just because it's been so cool for so long, um, the plant is just kind of like shocked by the sudden change in temperature. I'm also putting a little bit of uh, water down in the drip just so the soil has a good amount of moisture uh, going into the hot day and there'll be some evaporative cooling on the surface of the soil as well. Fine tip protection. It's July 4th. This is the 1634 Rhea and this is the 2350 Dinger. Um, just doing some vine burying, assessing some of the damage from the heat where we, we got some leaf burn, but overall, I think we survived. Over here on the ginger, ginger plant, we've got this one, which is about seven days old. Um, hard to see, but it looks like it's starting to grow. It's kind of got a bit of a weird shape, a little bit of a pear shape. And then underneath there, I won't pull it apart. That's only a one day or two day old um, pumpkin. So I really can't tell for sure. I had to set that one in like 95 degree heat. So it's still TBD whether or not it, uh, it actually took.